Hi, and welcome everyone. You are in the session Faculty Talk, Athletes in Sports Management with Faculty and a Coach. Uh, we are joined by two folks from University of Colorado, Colorado Springs, who are going to tell us more about their university and their sports management program. Uh, go ahead and take it away, Ruby. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jenica. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ruby, and uh, along with my colleague, Ian, we're so excited to spend the next 30 minutes with you guys on air to share about our amazing sports management and athletes program at University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. So um, here is a quick overview of our agenda today. So first, I will kick up with our UCCS overview and admissions process for international applicants. And then my colleague Ian will start with sports management and athlete program at UCCS introduction. And then we will spend some time for Q&A. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I know many of the international students and their parents may not know where Colorado is. So here is the map and it shows where Colorado is. And also uh, Colorado Springs is the second largest city uh, in the state of Colorado next to Denver. We're not too far from Denver, Colorado, only one hour, one and a half hour away, depends on the traffic. And then the state of Colorado is ranked as top 10 best state within the U.S. because of its strong economy, great education, and great healthcare system. And the city of Colorado Springs is also voted as the best place to live in the U.S. for young professionals because of its booming economy, very safe environment, and also a great education opportunity. And then Colorado Springs has also been ranked as top three best city to live in the United States by the US News and World Report. And we're also the city of Colorado Springs is uh, also the uh, Olympic city USA. So here uh, you can see some of the pictures of our city, uh, the Olympic Training Center where um, it's also located within our city. The city of Colorado Springs is very vibrant, fast growing, uh, with great sports management and health uh, services industry. And approximately every year, uh, we have 15,000 athletes train at the U.S. Olympic uh, Training Center. And uh, the city of Colorado Springs have over 20 uh, national governing bodies of sports headquartered in the city. And also the National Strength and Conditioning Association is also headquartered in the city of Colorado Springs. So, and here are just some additional rankings about our state. Uh, the state of Colorado is ranked as a uh, very top state for a lot of science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and business related programs, or, uh, you know, the startup companies. So great uh, economy brings a lot of job opportunities. And for our international students, uh, they can take advantage of OPT, the optional practice training, to uh, do their internships or to even work after they graduate from our university. So uh, University of Colorado is the largest uh, uh, public institution, research institution within the state of Colorado. Colorado Springs is the fastest growing campus within the four campus. And we have a little over 12,000 students on our campus. Our students to faculty ratio is 16 to one. So even though we're a medium sized public research institution, but you will still enjoy a relatively small classroom size and have great interaction with your teaching professor as well as your uh, with your peer students. And uh, we have 2% of our student body are international students, and they are from 82 different countries, very diverse. And here's our tuition fee. Uh, we're very competitive in terms of our tuition, especially for international students. They are paying the exactly same amount of money as any uh, non-residents, like any other American students who are from outside of the state of Colorado. So on the left is our undergraduate tuition fee. Uh, it's around $27,000 per academic year. And then the living cost is $13,000. And then for graduate programs, it's around um, $18,000 and same for living cost. And besides that, we do offer scholarships and teaching assistant uh, positions and our uh, research assistant positions. And here's the quick overview of our admissions. On the left, you will see our undergraduate application requirements. Uh, for English proficiency, if you do 
uh, if you are from the um, non-English speaking region, uh, you will have to provide English proficiency. We require TOEFL 75, IELTS 6, Duolingo 100. Uh, we are test optional school, so no ICT or ACT required. Um, besides that, uh, you will need to provide your high school transcripts and we offer rolling admissions. So for graduate requirements, uh, you will have to do uh, uh, the college transcript evaluation. And then some of the program, the graduate programs require GRE or GMAT. Um, it's case by, uh, it's by the department and the major. So here's my contact information. If you have quick questions or if later on you, you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at ychong, Y-C-H-E-N-G, at uccs.edu. Okay, let me hand it over to my colleague, Ian. Awesome, Ruby. Thank you so much for that overview and for um, handing it over. I am going to find my slides. And as I do that, um, I noticed there's obviously a lot of Canadians here, go figure. And so basically I'm born and raised in Alaska and so, um, and also Minnesota. So the state of hockey is vibrant in those two states in particular. And we challenge Canadians all the time. So let's go, let's, um, let's do that. So I'm here to talk about our sport management program. My role is the assistant director for the sport management program at the University of Colorado, Colorado Springs. And we have a very great opportunity for our students. If you are interested in sport and passionate about sport, and then also wanna pursue a degree in business, then this is a really, really great place for you to do that. A, we've got a strong curriculum that we'll talk about, but B, we've got a really, really rich sport community right here in Colorado Springs, also up in Denver. Um, as you'll see by the title of this slide, we also work with English Premier League soccer clubs. And so if you want to come to, to school in the United States and then also go travel the world, England in particular, we've got great connections and opportunities for our students to go abroad and do their internships. <clears throat> Excuse me. Quick overview. Like I said, first and foremost, what we want you guys to know is that we are a, a sport management program that's based on business. So you would graduate with, with your Bachelor of Science in business, and then your emphasis is going to be sport management. A lot of programs throughout the country and throughout the world are um, kinesiology or sports science focused, which is great, um, but we are very much business focused. And so if you're looking for the marketing side, operations, finance, accounting, business development, things along those lines, um, ticket sales, sponsorship activation, that's really where our program takes flight and allows our students to succeed. We've currently got about 135 students in the program um, and about 35% are from outside of Colorado. The vast majority of course are from other states in the United States, but we do currently have 40, I'm sorry, not 40, we have four international students. And so a program of 135 students, having four international students is actually a, a pretty big deal. Um, those are uh, they're going to be from Italy, Germany, and Spain are currently where our four international students would be coming from. Uh, retention rate is 87%, and that's extremely important to us. We take a lot of pride in that. And what that means is that students that come to this program stay in the program. They find what they were looking for. They got what they were told they were going to get. They're engaged in the community. They're engaged in internships, and they're learning um, curriculum in a really, really good way. So that's important to know that if you do come across the border, you're very likely to stay um, with, that, with that retention rate. Curriculum, I know it's a lot on the screen. It's probably very small for you, but the point is we align our curriculum with AACSB. That's the accreditation that we have. It's the top uh, accreditation for business schools worldwide top 5% internationally and about top 20 to 25% here in the United States. So you're going to have a very robust um, curriculum that's backed to the industry and it's backed to what this accreditation body uh, requires. We're also aligning that through the sports industry. So as, as Ruby mentioned, we are Olympic City USA. Um, we also are partnered with the Denver Nuggets, the Colorado Rapids and the Colorado Avalanche. And so that way we've got a lot of, of different partners that we are working with to make sure that when our students graduate and when they go on internship, they're able to make an impact with the organizations that they work with. 
Um, if they're not, we change our curriculum and enhance it. And that way you guys are getting the tools and the skills that you need um, through that education. In terms of sectors, so we simplify it. There are hundreds of thousands of sport organizations throughout the world. Um, we break it down into four key sectors. So professional, collegiate, Olympic, and recreational. Back to hockey in Canada, I know hockey is, is pretty much life. Um, that's a huge deal. That's also happens to be a huge deal here in Colorado Springs in particular, in Colorado in general. So the Colorado Avalanche are here. We have on the collegiate side, we have the National Collegiate Hockey Conference, which is in my opinion, the strongest hockey conference in all of college hockey. Um, some might argue the Big East might take that, but um, again, for another time. So we've got a lot of connections within professional sport. You'll see that West Ham United logo up there. That's one of about seven clubs that we work with pretty closely. The director of our program flies tomorrow to England to continue to build those relationships and really renew those relationships post COVID. Um, we are planning to send two more students in January to West Ham United. Uh, we haven't sent any since COVID hit back in 2020. So that's great to see that coming back online for our students. Um, so these are just a few, Olympic City USA, we've got the headquarters of the United States Olympic and Paralympic Committee. Um, it's about 28 national governing bodies. So USA Swimming, USA Basketball, USA Hockey are the, are the big ones, um, but we've got a, quite a variety of those beyond that. USA Hockey, if I didn't mention, it's, it's pictured there, um, but they are also headquartered right here in Colorado Springs. So a ton of sport right here. And what's important for that is we're gonna require internships as part of our curriculum. The industry requires it in their new hires. If you come out of school and don't have experience, it's gonna be a really difficult journey. And so we're requiring that our students are engaged, they're gaining experience, they're learning um, in the field, and that way your resume is ready and prepared. So within our from our campus, from about a five to 10 mile radius of our campus, we have 60, six zero sport organizations that are right here in Colorado Springs. That's incredible. There are very few places in the United States that you can go that has that density of sport within its city. Plus we go to Denver, plus we go to England, um, plus you can go back to Canada over you know, the holidays or over the summer period. So lots of sport is here and a lot of ways to connect uh, with the industry, which is super important. And then this industry engagement piece. So instead of saying we require you to do two internships, go figure it out, good luck. We're here to hold your hand. Um, one of my key jobs is to connect our students to build those relationships um, and to foster introductions and allow students to kind of open their wings and fly. So we host a variety of events, about five events per semester um, that are very much student and professional focused. And so tomorrow night actually is our biggest event of the year. It's our networking night. And so we will have, at this point, we have 39 sport professionals and about 100 of our 133 sport management students attending our, our sport networking night. And all it is, is learning how to interact, engage, and start the conversation with professionals, and then how to follow up with them and build that relationship for future internships and career opportunities. So that's one example of, of about 10 that we do every single year. And you'll see these images here uh, demonstrating different activities and ways our students have been engaged. Um, that, that picture in the center left of a bunch of students standing around tables, that's our networking night. So that's what, we'll, that, that's what things will look like tomorrow evening. Um, and without that, without this industry engagement, the internships aren't as successful because it's hard for students to open those doors if they're, if they're asked to do it themselves. And so that's where our program comes in and really opens the doors for them based on conversations and interest from the student body. And then finally, just to give you a glimpse of, of kind of what the admission criteria is, um, Ruby mentioned it and it may, you know, there's as an international student things, um, there's a couple more steps that Ruby had mentioned, but here you can see if you're an incoming freshman versus a transfer student and what that might look like for you to be admitted to the College of Business. Um, because that's what you need to get into before you can become a sport management student. If you look at this and are like, shoot, I don't have these grades or these scores, I can't get in. 
That's not necessarily the case. You'll see this business intent uh, category at the bottom. And so students that don't initially meet the criteria, the door is not closed on you forever. You can still come to UCCS. You can still prove yourself and take certain classes that are graduation progressive. Um, and you can still get into the program and not delay time in graduation. So please know that, that if you initially don't meet these scores, um, there's still hope. And I would very much encourage and welcome a conversation with you one-on-one -on -one to discuss what that road might look like for you. And finally, for this segment of the, of the presentation, why not come to UCCS? This is our campus and the backdrop is Pikes Peak. It's America's mountain. It's a 14,000 foot mountain, um, beautiful recreational opportunities, beautiful scenery, beautiful weather. Um, the winters are far more bearable than, than Canada, Alaska, or Minnesota, trust me. So um, I will pause this part and I'm gonna jump over to our, um, and Ruby, you'll have to tell me if you can chime in, can you still see now the athletics screen? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. perfect. Thank you. So the other part we wanna talk about is, so that the sport management program is our academic program. That's for students that want to work in the sports industry. In conjunction, but different from that is our athletics program. And so if you are looking to be a student athlete um, who wants to continue in the collegiate arena, then we've got a really strong division two athletic conference that we wanna to talk to you guys about. And so our athletic director, Nathan Gibson, um, he was unable to be with us tonight, but I'm here to share some information on the strong academics and athletic program that we have here at UCCS. So here we've got 16 athletic sports. Um, you can go on uh, gomountainlions.com to see the different sports that are there to make sure they align with what you might be looking at. We do not have a varsity hockey program. Again, sorry, I keep I keep jumping Canada into hockey, but um, we do have an inline hockey program in the club side, and we have an ice hockey program on the club side. So that is there. 363 athletes, and that number will come back in reference um, in just a few minutes. This is our baseball stadium. It's beautiful. You're hitting home runs right into Pulpit Rock back there. Great setting, um, and it's a new facility in 2018. Here's some of the accolades from the 2021-2022 uh, season. And so you'll see here six conference championships, um, third in the RMAC. So that's our conference is the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. Again, we're division two. And if you're not familiar here in the United States, it's division one is the, the most competitive than division two, and then finally division three. Um, and so you can see some of the different accolades that they have here, great programs, great coaches, uh, really phenomenal athletes. And a lot of our students in our program, the sport management program are also student athletes. And so that's kind of why I'm speaking on, on this section. Right in the center of your screen there, uh, that's Michaela Mansfield. She's actually a, uh, a sport management graduate. So she graduated in 2016 um, and she's walking across the stage there shaking hands with Chancellor Reddy. Um, but she is a, a great example of a student athlete that, that conveys a lot of these metrics here, 3.3 GPAs for our student athletes. Um, 36 consecutive semesters with a 3.0 student athlete GPA average. That's amazing. Um, a lot of times athletic programs do not have these GPA um, accolades that, that UCCS does. 84% student athlete retention rate. That's another thing where athletes, student athletes are able to balance that student athlete dynamic because that's very challenging to be able to do both. And so um, that demonstrates that the coaches are working with the athletes to make sure that they can still be successful students. Um, and then leadership and service. The, the programs are very involved in the community. Um, they are not just on the court or in the classroom. They are going beyond that as well to raise money, um, to make an impact in a lot of different ways. And so that's, that's something that's super special and important for, for who the athletic department are. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here. Um, and I will turn it back to Ruby to go ahead and, and go on to the next topic. And up there, there we are. Perfect. Sounds good. And I wonder, Jenica, if we're open, um, if any of the audience here have any questions, you guys can feel free. I don't know if you guys can talk, but uh, definitely write in the chat box if you do have any questions for us. 
And I already left my uh, email address in the chat box, yceng at uccs.edu. If you guys have any questions later on, feel free to contact me um, anytime. Yeah, roller hockey. Somebody put that in. Um, that is that is awesome. I'm just looking at the chat now. Um, I'm going to post my email, and I'm also going to post a link to our YouTube video. Um, so I think that's a super great way for students to understand who we are. We have quite a few current students and alumni that are highlighted in that video. Um, so if you're interested in the program, I would check out this YouTube link to get some more information there too. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Ian. I learned so much too myself today. I, I never had this presentation before. I'm like, okay, I've missed a lot of key points when I'm talking to the students, but great session. Good. And then Kareth uh, Thien asked, can we get a copy of this? Jenica, what is your, how, how would that, I mean, how does that work in terms of where this live feed goes or recorded feed goes afterward? Oh, you answered it. Never mind. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so we will, people can still come in this room. So we're, we will close it at nine, but then we will open everything back up tomorrow with all the recordings available. So you can rewatch them. And then we will also put the recordings on our YouTube channel to live on forever. So you'll have a lot of chance to review the information. Um, Julie's asking a question. Uh, she says, my son's interested in baseball. How would he promote himself to the coach? And also are there walk-ons? Yeah, so Julie, I was just writing to you, but this is great. Um, if you email me, that's the best way. And I can send you another link um, because there is a link on the athletics webpage that I'm not seeing right now where a student can, a student athlete can submit some information about them, their, their talent, any, any um, statistics, potentially even videos, depending on the sport. So there's different ways to do that through a website. Um, through the athletics page that I just posted on there too for Kara and for Julie. So that would be the best thing, but definitely reach out to me and I'm glad to put you straight in touch with, with um, the coach as well, if necessary. Yeah, excellent. Oftentimes that's called the recruitment questionnaire. Um, and besides filling out a recruitment questionnaire, Ian, in your experience, um, are there any other things that people can do kind of during the recruitment process to get in touch with coaches? I know she's talking specifically about baseball and might be more of a generalist in that regard. Yeah, no, it's a great question. And it's, it's a challenge. I'll be honest with you. It's um, each coach is different, right? And how they engage and interact and what their availability and interface might look like. And so, and that's, that's true across every single university or, or platform persistence is important, but not over persistence. And so a lot of these coaches need reminders because they're, they're looking at hundreds or thousands of different athletes. And so continuing to press the flesh without becoming ridiculous. And that's an unknown balance because it depends on the coach. Um, but that's where someone like myself or an, or an equivalent at a similar program. So if you're not interested in sport management, but you are interested in, in athletics, having somebody like me, cause I'm not a gatekeeper. I don't want to say that, but I can help make introductions and I can help facilitate those conversations. But if it's, if you're looking at exercise science or something, well, then that's going to be somebody else other than me. Um, I just worked with our coach, basketball coach, coach Culver. He had a recruit on campus last week. I met with them because they happened to be interested in, in sport management. So that campus visit turned into a commitment over the weekend. And so that's where we really work together, the coaches and the programs, especially at a division two institution like we are, there's a lot of overlap to make sure that a student athlete has that student athlete balance. It's not it's not one or the other, it's, it's absolutely both. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you don't mind, I'll give a, a little tip from Education USA, which is uh, be organized, create a spreadsheet, because if you are going into the recruitment process and you're starting to contact coaches and teams, you're probably going to contact an, a number of people. And so you need to indicate on a spreadsheet, what university, what was the name of the coach, what's the email and when you got in touch with them. So that like Ian's saying, 
you know you're spamming them if you can see you've emailed them every week for five weeks. Um, so keep track of that. Another recommendation is start an email address just for your sport that the parents and the kids all have the, the uh, password to and make it a Google address and use the Google Doc for the spreadsheet. So keep all that information together in one spot. And then that way you know exactly how many emails you are sending out and who is responding to them and they will surface right to the top of that inbox. So those are usually my organizational tips um, as you get started on the process. Those are really great tips and I wish more people would, would follow that advice, so. <laughs> Um, and then Kara, I just replied to you, we have women's lacrosse, we don't have men's lacrosse. Um, if you're looking at a club sport, then that is available, but not on a varsity level. So, Yeah, I was going to say, I thought we had spotlighted a, Cal a Calgary uh, lacrosse player at your school before, so he must have been on the club team. Gotcha. Okay, huh, that's interesting. Cool. Yeah, Ruby, that was something you sent to me uh, a couple of years back. Yeah. Very good. Anything else you guys can think of, throw it in the chat. Um, yeah, we're happy to continue to give suggestions. Oh, here I see Joshua oh, on the Q&A &A. side. Yep. Um, basketball. So then, yeah, Joshua, if you want to email me, I'm, I'm happy to, to interface with you on the side. Big claim to fame on basketball. So if you follow U.S. basketball, Derek White is a guard. He played for the San Antonio Spurs. He was, Now he plays for the Boston Celtics. He was a student in our sport management program, played basketball at UCCS at Division II. As he grew and matured in size and skill, he got picked up by CU Boulder, our sister campus in Boulder, which is Division I, 29th pick overall by the San Antonio Spurs. He's crushing it in the NBA. So Coach Culver is a grower of talent and development. He's an amazing coach that um, does great things with his athletes. So um, definitely send your, your son our way for that. Yeah, and I would say generally at the grade 12 level, um, you know, you're you're really like in the thick of when you need to be in touch with coaches and, and working on recruitment. You might find, um, you would either be recruited this year or a coach might say they would want you to do a gap year um, or like an upgrading year and recruit you for the next season. So that's something that's common in the States, particularly in basketball, especially if you're looking at division one or division two. Um, mostly get them in, get them in front of, get them in front of eyes, get them in front of coaches. So if you can get in big tournaments where there's going to be coaches who can see him, that's, that's how Canadian basketball players get recruited down to the States. Um, so he's got to go out for the big teams in your area and he's got to get, go in the big tournaments. And then particularly if you can travel down to the States for some of those showcase sort of tournaments, those are usually big. I see head nods. So yeah. Uh, yeah. And videos, videos go a really long way too, because ultimately if a coach can't see your player just because of geographical challenges or whatnot, then um, having game video is something that most coaches are going to ask for. So absolutely. Tennis, we've got a tennis program coming through. Yeah, we, we don't have, I'm going to double check. Um, but I, to my knowledge, we do not have a tennis program on either side. Yeah, correct. There's no, no tennis here, unfortunately. On, on the varsity side. So I know our time is is up, but we really appreciate your guys' time and engagement in this. This is awesome for us to know that there's an audience outside of the US. We always love to engage because it brings just cultural ideas and diversity. And that's absolutely critical in the classroom and in, in the workplace. So thank you guys for your time, Jenica. Thank you so much for hosting us tonight. Absolutely. So I got a question to get in touch with me. You would email me at ottawa at educationusa.org. We have three advisors across Canada. So um, if you are in the eastern region, which is Ottawa and East, that's how you would contact me. Um, if you are uh, in the west, you would contact Zhao Ying. Uh, here's her email. And if you are in 
if you're in Toronto or anywhere else in um, Ontario that's not Ottawa, you contact Hung at Hung Lu. There we go. Um, and to that final question, uh, oh yeah, there you go. Ian, I would, yeah, there's, it's never too soon to be in touch with coaches. All right. Thanks everybody. We'll go ahead and wrap it up and do feel free to keep the conversation going by email. Have a good night. Thank you guys. Thank good you night. everyone. Thank Ruby. you again. Thank you, Jenica. Bye.